Oh, so heavy. Ooh. Lesson plans. All right, let's get this party started. Welcome, you guys. So we're going to be talking about shampooing tonight and the different types of shampoos. We're also going to be getting a little bit into the pH scale and water because all these things affect your hair when you're using shampoos. Okay, there's a saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Buddha. Come on, Miss Bonnie. Get ready, girl. I'm ready. Are you? All right, so just a little warning here. This may be a two part video because there's so much information that I wanna give you and I don't wanna hold you guys up for too long. Um, I just know from teaching that this is the generation where you have to take a break about every 20 minutes. You can't just sit there and listen to a lecture. I get that totally with it. So. The first thing I want to get into is the different types of shampoo. But before I start talking about that, let's break down what shampoo is. Shampoo is a soap of sorts, you could say, that cleanses. And remember, in my sanitation and disinfect disaffection, disinfection video, we talked about sanitizing how even showering or shampoo in our hair is considered sanitizing. And so when you shampoo your hair, it's a form of sanitizing your hair, meaning that you are greatly reducing the amount of bacteria that's in your hair along with the oils. And remember that oil, what is it called? Sebum, that's right. So you got oil, you got dirt, you got product and bacteria in your hair. And so we shampoo. So shampoo has detergent in it unless it's a sulfate free but even that has something in it that's going to be cleansing your hair and i'm not going to get too deep into the chemistry of shampoo i'll save that for a later class but i do want to tell you this in the main part of shampoos which is called a surfactant and that's your detergent molecule there's a water loving part and then there's an oil loving part so the way that I remember it is because it's called hydrophilic and lipophilic. Well, hydro makes me think of hydration. So then I know that that means the water loving part and lipophilic makes me think of the term lipids, which lipids has to do with moisture, which would be oil. And so that makes me remember that's my oil loving part. So when you place shampoo onto that damp hair, that molecule they because there's two parts to it attracts to the like part of it right in other words the hair is wet so there's water droplets on the hair the water loving part of the shampoo will actually be attracted to the water in the hair and then there's the oil and dirt that you've gathered up in the soap right so the oil loving part actually goes to that oil and dirt part of the hair and draws on to that so then you have it like swooped up in this bubble here and then when you go to rinse your client's hair or even your own hair, all that is flushing down the drain. So I think that's pretty cool to know. And that's just giving you a little idea of what shampoo is. It's to sanitize the hair if we're being technical with terms, right? So now we get into the different types of shampoos. And the only reason why I feel like this class is important is because you as the professional or as the student in training, you need to know about the different shampoos 
therefore you could do retail with the proper shampoos and you are selecting the right shampoo for your client's hair and catering to the needs of their hair and their scalp all right so i have about 13 different shampoos listed here oh and i forgot to say that if you are a student right now currently and you are studying from the Miladies textbook or if you are studying for state board because you haven't gone yet you will find this information on pages 328 through 334. The first shampoo is a pH balance shampoo and I'm not going to get into the pH scale just yet but just know this that over the years um, as far as shampoos go you have to think most of us who didn't know because I didn't know about the technicalities of hair and the chemistry of it until I actually started school when I was 21 years old so all these years prior to that I was using whatever we had at home right I didn't know about professional products the pH scale or any of that so I say that to say a lot of issues that we have with our scalp um, even though we were told it's genetic, a lot of it has to do with products that we've used over the years on our hair. And that includes your shampoo. So just think we, um, we used baby shampoo and I'm not going to name names, but you know, the sulfate or the detergent and that, how strong that is on baby fine hair. And then, you know, you grow up as a kid and you're using whatever your parents have and that's drugstore bought products. Most of the time, unless you grew up in a salon home, then you, you knew about it because your parents worked in the salon. But other than that, most of us didn't know that, right? And then your water ties into that. Okay, and so when you have hard water, hard water mixed with this pH um, that's not pH balanced shampoo, it's high up on the pH scale, you're stripping your skin, which is your scalp, and you're damaging the hair follicles because what does skin do? It absorbs these things, right? And so then your hair follicles become degenerated and the hairs over the years start growing in thinner until they're not growing anymore. Not to mention some of us pulled our hair and ponytails and braids and just all kind of stuff ties into that. But we're speaking about shampoos right now and a lot of it does have to do with that. So really quick, pH balance shampoos. Um, our pH as people is 4.5 to 5.5. So pH balance shampoo is a balancing shampoo that would keep your hair around that pH 4.5 to 5.5. What's the good thing about that? The good thing is the cuticles are closed when your hair is pH balanced, which your hair appears to be more shiny and it's actually more healthy. When it's higher on the pH scale, the cuticles are blown open, so the hair tends to look frizzy, the ends look split and damaged. And sometimes if you're a swimmer, all these things come into play um, your hair can get lighter, it can start turning green, all that kind of stuff. So conditioning shampoo, also known as moisturizing shampoos designed to make the hair uh, smooth and shiny and add moisture to the hair. Uh, medicated shampoo contains medicine in it, special ingredients that's effective in reducing dandruff and other scalp conditions. Clarifying shampoo, we use clarifying shampoo before we do perms because clarifying shampoo actually goes into the hair deeper than any other shampoo and it removes buildup out of the hair. So if that client is on medications, if that client is a swimmer, you know, you definitely don't want to do highlights on someone with chlorine in their hair. That's when you start seeing the smoke. So clarifying shampoo is really good for that. And also to be honest with you, if a color comes out too dark, sometimes you might want to consider shampooing them with a clarifying shampoo and it'll break down some of that color a little bit and get some of the color out so it won't be as dark. Balancing shampoo is for oily scalp and hair um, and it will wash away excessive oiliness without stripping the hair. And then you have strengthening shampoo, which um, 
is designed to strengthen the hair. So a lot of um, misconceptions about those kind of shampoos when you're using a strengthening shampoo, because that also kind of ties in with a protein shampoo. You're expecting your hair to feel soft from that shampoo, but when something's strengthening your hair, it's not gonna feel soft. In fact, it's gonna feel really kind of like this, like tough. And that's okay, because if your hair is breaking off excessively, you want that. Now, what you could do to counteract some of that toughness is use a moisturizing conditioner. So that's it for now, guys. I don't wanna to spend too long on this video, but stay tuned for the next video, Shampoos Part Two.